Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to quickly recover some details in a photo using the shadows and highlights adjustment in Photoshop. Let's get started. So let's say we wanted to bring back some of the detail in the darker parts of this image. We could do it in a few different ways like with curves and levels and layer masks, but the quickest way is usually just to use the shadows highlights adjustment. First I'm going to right click on my layer and convert it to a smart object. That way the changes I make won't be permanent. Now with my layer selected, I'm going to come up here and click Image, Adjustments, Shadows, Highlights. At first you only get two sliders, one to brighten up the dark areas in your image and one to darken the bright areas. You can see as I slide the shadows amount up and down how it affects the dark areas in our image. And the same thing happens to the bright areas when I move the highlight slider up and down. A lot of times, this is as far as you'll need to go, so if I set the shadow slider somewhere around 25, I can check the preview checkbox, and you can see that I've already brought back some detail in the darker parts of my image. There are some more advanced features that we can play with, so I'm going to click the Show More Options checkbox and show you how to use those. First, we'll take a look at the shadows area. We already know that the amount slider controls how powerful our effect is, so now we'll look at the tonal width. To make my changes more obvious, I'm going to take my shadows amount and turn it up to about 75. The tonal width slider lets you set the threshold of what's considered a shadow. So if I turn the tonal width all the way up, lighter parts of my image are considered shadows and become brighter. And if I turn the tonal width all the way down, only the darkest parts of my image are considered shadows. Usually somewhere between 25 and 50 is a good starting point. The radius slider changes how your other adjustments blend with your original image. If this is set too low, you'll get a really weird, contrasty, cartoony type look, and if it's set too high, your photo will start to lack detail. I usually like to start with it way up and then move it down slowly, and once I see that it's becoming a little too cartoony and contrasty, I'll add about 10 or 20 pixels to that value. So I have my radius at 65, my tonal width at 35, and now I can bring my amount back down to a normal level. So I'll take that down to zero and then increase it until I'm happy with the detail. So that looks pretty good at 25%. So you can see if I check the preview checkbox, the difference that it makes in our image. The highlight section works just the same as the shadow section, except instead of brightening the dark areas, it darkens the bright areas. Now, this image doesn't have a whole lot of bright areas, so our highlights adjustments are going to be minimal. Again, I'm going to turn the amount all the way up so we can see our changes really easily, and then I'm going to adjust the tonal width until it affects just the areas that I consider highlights. Next, I'm going to set my radius to match the radius of my shadows, and then I'll take the amount down until I get the look that I want. The adjustment section at the bottom contains some more advanced features that you're rarely going to use. The color correction slider lets you add some color back into your image that gets taken out when you brighten the shadows and darken the highlights. The default value of plus 20 is usually good to leave alone. The mid-tone contrast and black clip and white clip areas change the overall contrast of your image. Typically, you'll want to leave that set to zero. So now that I've made my adjustments, I'm going to hit OK. And since we're working with a smart object, these become smart filters which you can turn on and off. So you can see the before and the after and how I've brought back some details in the shadows and the highlights without dramatically altering my original photo. Like a lot of effects, there's more than one way to do this in Photoshop, but the Shadows Highlights Adjustment tool is really quick and easy once you've used it a few times. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.